45 minutes you know presentation we're going to hold all questions to the end if you have a question feel free to put them in the chat and uh jennifer on on our team at, at the towards the end she is going to um manage that process and fill those questions um, if you have a specific question about a specific thing in your park, uh, we may not get to it, but we will email you later and try to answer those questions. But if you have a general question, please put in the chat, even if you have a, a, you know, a direct question to your park, put in the questions. We want to hear what you guys um, have to say about your parks and what, you know, we want to hear from the residents and that's why we're doing this. Um, so no further ado, Denise, you have the floor. Thank you. Hi, everyone. You are my kind of people. Anybody <laughs> who loves parks, and I, I've been sort of looking at the chat and seeing the parks you guys are saying. I, I love all those, too. Um, we're very fortunate. We have so many within the city of Orlando. Um, we have about 116 that people use um, periodically. Some of them are, are more developed than others. What I decided to do today, and you'll see here in the presentation, is go over some of the big projects we've got going on right now. Um, and some, there's a couple in there that are gonna be future projects um, when we get funding for them. And I'm, we are so lucky, they, um, the city did a bond issue, I think it was a year and a half ago now, uh, for a lot of the parks projects. And so we have some really amazing things going on right now. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and do the, okay, here we go. Okay, that's just my name and title. And at the end, I'm sure they'll give you some uh, information on how to contact me if you have a specific question that I wasn't able to answer. So we're going to start right off with McCoy Community Park. Um, it is down. Can everybody see the uh, my little laser pointer? Yes, I can see it. OK, awesome. This is Narcusi Road here. And this is Dowden Road and the airport is right over in this area. So it's where Dowden Road dead ends into the airport basically. So if you're trying to find, find the park, I've got the star a little off the park because I didn't want to completely obscure it. Um, and we will go to the next slide. And this shows you a, a, a blow up, a closer view of the park. And it's a um, baseball park in general, but it's got other things right here is um, a really nice playground with a little shelter that people can uh, either just use or if you want to make sure if you want to have like a kid's birthday party or something you can rent it you can call in and rent it. We have a here's um, a pathway all the way around for people who want to come and walk we're right across from a subdivision down here uh, where the people can come across and use it. Um, We've got this set up for the mostly little league play, but adult leagues can use this also. Uh, we've got a couple of fields that are that are adult league fields. You, you notice, I don't know if anybody would know the difference, but we have one softball field out here. Does anybody have an idea of why? Okay. Um, we, we normally do this because the setup we have here will accommodate all ages. And if we have a softball field here, we can use that for the littler kids and still use it for adult softball. So we try to, um, you know, ball fields are precious. And so <laughs> we try to make them multi-use even if they are designated for a certain sport. So we wanna make sure we can accommodate all, all ages. This building right here is our um, maintenance building. And we've got one maintenance building right now in this entire sector the southeast sector of um, Orlando. It's so far to go from our normal offices all the way down here that uh, we have a building where people, where our crews can just report to down here. And it saves a lot of driving. Last time I drove it, it took uh, almost an hour for me to get down into this area from my office, which is on Primrose. Okay, moving on, also down in the um, southeast sector, the um, like Nona area, we have Heroes Community Park. 
it is right here is um, the Laureate Park Elementary School. And here is our park. We're adjacent to them. There's Centerline Drive comes through. I think they actually have built it by now. This is um, taken earlier this year, this photograph, or so, sorry, uh, last year in 2020. Um, and then this is the um, veterans. We have, go to the next slide here. Um, this is our multi, these are four multi-purpose fields. We also have a playground with shelter up here. And this is a restroom facility. Down here, we have another um, picnic shelter and we have a trail that goes and it has fitness equipment with it and it goes here and it goes all the way up here. Eventually, um, Tavistock is working on a um, bike station that they're gonna put here and you'll be able to re, um, pair your bike and um, park it, do, do what you need to be able to use the trails out here also, which is great for anybody who wants to bike to the park and use the park. Um, right here, this is Orlando Adventure Park. And that is a private company that we're sharing a parking lot with. It's our parking lot, but they're renting it from us to use for their, um, their water sports. They have all sorts of things going on there. So uh, it's always fun whenever I go out to check on the park to take a few minutes um, and just watch some of the skiers and, and other people um, climbing their, their apparatus and you know people falling and getting wet. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch. Next on the list is we've got um, the Lake Eola Park expansion. Um, I think everybody knows where Lake Eola Park is. This is Robinson. This is Orange. Um, there's, I'm, I'm sorry, Rosalind. And, um, and right here is the property that we're talking about. These, these two parcels right here, they're privately owned at the time, but there is a a uh, group of ladies, actually there's two ladies that are heading the whole thing where they are fundraising to actually purchase th this property. They've got an agreement with the owner of those, those properties where they can uh, purchase them for a set dollar amount. And um, they're, they're like three quarters of the way to their goal, I believe. So if anybody is interested in donating to that to help us get this piece of property for the park, um, that would be very welcome. And we can send out information to you later on with the link to where their, their fundraising page is if you're interested. Um, they are, we're planning, what's nice about this is if we can get this, that means we would have three corners of this block. You can see this would take care of this corner. We have this corner and this corner too. I think it would be a while before we'd ever be able to get this because um, this building was fairly recently renovated, but Overall, it, it gives us some uh, another gateway into the park, and we are in the process right now of um, doing the master plan for this for Lake Eola Park again, and that will take a look at what we would do with that um, to bring people into the park from from Rosalind and and um, the, more the south part of Orlando. A lot of people are interested in the Packing District Park. This is a brand new one. You can see from this aerial that it's underway. Here is Princeton. Right here is John Young Parkway. Here's Colonial. Um, and this is WD Judge Road. This, the park itself is this parcel right here, including this little piece right here. This little piece is eventually going to be the Orlando Tennis Center. We're moving it from the downtown core, from the Creative Village area, um, up into here, um, into this piece right here. Part of why we're doing that is because the uh, UCF expansion into that area and also the housing that needs to go with Valencia College and UCF in Creative Village uh, is being built there. And so we're, we're relocating it. It gives us a terrific opportunity to make improvements. Our old um, tennis center was old and uh, getting worn. So this gives us a brand new facility up here. Part of this parcel, and I'll show you in the next slide here. I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit here. This piece right here 
is this piece right here. Just to give you sort of an orientation. Here is the tennis center parcel. There's gonna be a large retention pond um, in this area that will take care of the storm water for all the development in this area. There'll be a parking lot just south of the tennis center on the other side of this is New Hampshire right here. And this is where Texas would extend. Um, Texas Avenue is right up here. So this is where it would extend. There is going to be in this area like a plaza with um, a large shelter under it that can be used for performances. And there'll be a restroom building in here too. This area is gonna be open lawn that will be seating. It slopes a little bit down this way to the south and it will allow people to be able to look up towards the um, performance area. This area here is um, sort of undecided what we're doing with it right now. We don't, we don't have the funds or anything to do anything with it, but we will start soon, I believe, um, having community meetings to talk about what to put in there. We had pre previous community meetings talking about the overall site and a lot of the, the residents, the people who attended, um, we're really interested in getting a dog park out here. So that may be one thing that we use this for. This parcel right here is not part of the park, but it is gonna house in this area, a new YMCA. And then this area is going to be townhomes. And so we're excited about that too, because they'll be very close to the tennis center and um, it's, it's family oriented. So we're hoping there'll be kids that will wanna learn how to play tennis and um, you know, adults that want to come out and play also. So um, it again will expand sort of our, our membership base, hopefully. This is a layout. And I'm sorry it's so fuzzy, but um, it was best I could do patching together um, different sheets of plans that we have to get this um, so you can see it. This is what the Orlando Tennis Center is going to look like. Um, here's where Texas comes down around where you saw it on the other plan. Here's New Hampshire. Here's that parking lot I told you about. Right here will be our new uh, building and it'll house a community room to be used for community events, but also for uh, trainings, teachings, you know, when uh, the weather's bad or whatever, they can, they can have people in there practicing their, their um, swings without balls. Um, and then this will have shower and locker facilities um, and offices. We are gonna have the tennis courts laid out here. This one's laid out as a championship court and it'll have seating along here in this area to be able to watch um, the semi-pros that come in um, for tournaments or for regular tournaments uh, with local residents. Back here is um, our maintenance building. And one of the things that we liked about it, we decided to double use this wall of the maintenance building for a half court so people could practice their swings uh, or their, um, their hits against the, the wall. So it's got a dual purpose and, and it allowed us to actually fit um, a half court, which we don't have right now into it. This will be sort of a resting gathering space. The rest of it, there'll be um, a city lift station up here for the wastewater handling for all the new development that's going to be happening to the east. We're going to move on. I know a lot of you were interested in Lake Lorna Dune Park. Um, it's currently under construction. We're so excited about it. It's been on our list for years and years to have something done with it. One thing I want to show you on this um, is this is where the, for people who are familiar with it, this is Church Street. This is Tampa Avenue. Um, this is Central. And this is Lorna Dune, Lake, Lake Lorna Dune. The, the whole park um, actually goes all the way here. This street, we have recently changed Tampa Avenue in that one block to be one way and have parking. So it, it's a northbound road now that has parking off the side of it. We needed just to provide some more parking for, for the park um, while we renovated everything. Janine, thought, just real quickly, Susan, yeah. just clarification, that's Rio Grande um, oh, uh, yes. Street, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. I called it Tampa. Yeah, Rio Grande. Yes, you're right. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, and I wanted to show you, this is starting from Tampa Avenue. That's why I had it on my mind here. Um, looking, this was a drone um, shot that we did in, in August. Um, it's a lot more done now. It's, it's basically 90% done, but I just thought this was a cooler shot than just showing you a set of plans. Um, this is a parking lot that you can access off of Tampa Avenue. And we have a restroom building and then we have um, a garden area over here. This is a all children's inclusive playground. It's the first real inclusive playground we have within the city of Orlando. Um, some of the residents were very, very, um, you know, pushing for this and we thank them greatly. This is, this is gonna be such an asset to the community. We were able to ask, get a couple of grants so we could get some shade over the playground and um, it'll be able to be used, you know, more than the typical playground because we do have a shade over it. Um, we have, you know, we are concerned with people's health and wellness too. And, and being able to shade areas like this where the kids can play without having to worry about, um, you know, having their skin damaged from sun is gonna be tremendous also. This area is a splash pad, our first splash pad in the city of Orlando too, that's owned by the city. We're really excited about that also. Our, our aquatics manager has been begging for years to be able to get um, a splash pad and we're finally able to do it. And so this is, this is gonna be awesome. Again, we'll have some shade structures around here too. You can, if you drive by there now, you can see that. We have a walk that goes all the way around the lake. We had many, many, many months of community meetings out here and I attended all, but I, I think one and all the residents um, got together and decided what kinds of features they wanted in, in the park. And we listed them from, you know, number one, number two on down. And we've been able to accommodate most of those. And the number one one was a sidewalk around the lake so that people could exercise. And I'm happy to report that we've got a very, very nice one wide enough. You can see there's a truck on, on the sidewalk over here, uh, wide enough that, you know, three or four people could probably work side, uh, walk side by side. Here we have a nature overlook. We wanted to get people out close to um, the water. You can see there's one here too. The next two um, photos here that shows you a little bit better where this is. This is Camping World Stadium right here, just to orient you. This is part of the old Citrus Bowl Camping World Stadium here. So again, splash pad, you can see the walkway here. This is Right here is how Rio Grande was curved. You can see the parking, it's gonna be pull-in parking um, along here. This will be a picnic area where these trees are at. We're gonna have um, picnic tables, including access accessible picnic tables and grills in this area. Here is a shelter. Again, this can be used for performances. People can sit here and watch what's happening here. Um, we have, OUC worked with this and they, are, they have solar panels on top of this to help um, power the, um, all the lights out here. And also um, the city's got a policy that we're trying to have more net zero buildings, meaning um, they, they bring in more electricity than what they expend. And so we're using that to do part of the, the uh, energy requirements for the park. This is gonna be uh, two basketball courts. You can see in this photo, they're done now, but we have bleachers uh, on both ends so that people can um, watch the games right now. There's really no good place for people to sit while they're watching the games and um, it's much more convenient for them. There's the restroom building here too. And then this is gonna be, um, have, it's gonna have checker tables um, and chess tables. Okay, one thing that we're super, super excited about too um, is the residents in this area wanted Lorna Dune Park to be like the Lake Eola of the west side. And so we have done everything we can. They, they had a fountain put in um, as part of our construction project. We, it, it went active probably about a month ago now and it's beautiful. And that was one of the things that, that the residents really wanted also. This, <laughs> really sort of ugly building has us very excited right now because this is gonna be our new park office for the park. We're gonna have staff out here all the time, just like Lake Eola. 
And so we're going to renovate this building. Um, it used to be a building that um, the city had given to the Elks many, many years ago. I'm talking 50 years ago or so um, to use for their for their um, special needs scout groups. And um, we have uh, relocated the scout group to actually a, a better location for them that's more ADA accessible. And so we're going to reuse this building then as the scout office. It needs a lot of work. You can you can tell it's it's a very, very ugly building. We're going to have a, a meeting room in the middle for the community, like a community room, and we'll have our, our staff offices and actually our maintenance facility too will be at this end. So we'll have everything out there for um, staff to be able to take care of the park. We already have the staff identified and hired and, and ready to go. So we'll have a temporary building out there in the meanwhile, while this is being done, because this is gonna take us a while to, to finish the plans and renovate this building. Meanwhile, I should let you know too, the park will be open. It, we'll just have a temporary facility for them. Okay, the next um, project I wanna to talk to you about is the Lake Fairview Park uh, renovation project. And we're not doing the entire park. We only have enough funding to do like the shoreline portion. And I'll explain that here in a minute. You can see this is Trotters Park. They're right across the street from each other. This is Lee Road. This is OBT. And this is the John Young flyover. Uh, Rosemont is right over here. These are both parks that we've had for a long time. Um, this area you can see has been already renovated and put into uh, use, but we have all this land over here that hasn't um, been developed yet. So as we get funding, I'll show you a master plan that, of what we're, what we're planning out there um, as we go through the slides here. But our current project right now is this portion of the lake. Here's a blow up of Lake Fairview Park. And again, it's this is um, the Orlando Rowing Club, these are both owned by the city, but they're rented out to them for on a long term basis because um, they provide benefits to the community. Um, and then this is Edgewater High School rowing facility. We um, always try to work with the local schools to help um, them with their their programming. This air, this building right here, this is the top of a building and it was an old um, Structure for for the beach that used to be out here. You can still see the beach. This is a little wall that divided the beach. It's all fenced off. There's a fence that goes all the way around this. The public cannot get into it. And as we've been, you know, looking at the uses in this park and everything, we realized we need to open this up to the community. Every time I was out there and I had this gate open, somebody would come and ask if they could just come and sit on one of these benches so they can enjoy the lake. And so a few years ago, we had decided, okay, we really need to do something to get this opened up again, but we didn't have any funding. We do have funding enough to do this part. So we're gonna be demoing this building. We're gonna be putting a new fence in to um, keep the, the rowing groups um, least section away, you know, um, secure. And then we're going to have the rest, all this opened up to the community. And um, people can come in and eat their lunch and, and look at the lake. It's very, very peaceful, very beautiful spot. We currently have a very, very old playground here that we wanted to replace. And so I'm happy to show you this is, and this is hot off the press. We're just now in the process of doing all the, the construction drawings for this. So you can see this is patched together a little bit from uh, a set of construction that I have. And we're building a new smaller restroom right here. And um, this is eventually, if, if the rowing groups want to fundraise to be able to put in showers and stuff for their uses, they will, they will fundraise and pay for that. We are designing the building so eventually it can be added onto, but that it won't um, cost anything in this particular phase in case they never um, are able to, to build it, the, the second half of it. We've got better sidewalks. We're going to build along the shoreline 
um, a boardwalk so that people can actually get out over the water with a seating area here and a couple of docks going out. And there'll be floating docks for the most part. Um, so they'll raise and lower as the, the water in the lake raises and lowers. And so boats will be able to tie up. This right here is a boat ramp that's existing that's pretty heavily used. And so we just wanted to make sure that people could have some use um, of the, the docks and also for people to be able to watch. They have regattas and things like that with the rowing clubs, the rowing groups. And so it, it's, um, it's beautiful to watch. And we wanna make sure people will be able to see it. This particular shelter, we probably are not gonna have funding to build right at the moment, we, but we are putting a shelter here and here. And this is a large shelter so that more than one group can possibly use it at a time and or a very large group. And we've got some girls gonna go in with it. Um, it, when we get this playground here done, we will demolish the old playgrounds. They, we can't even repair that one uh, much anymore. So it's, it, parts of it are even uh, blocked off now. This is what I was talking to you about, about what we have in mind for the rest of Trotters Park. Soccer is huge in this. Um, these are actually multi-purpose fields, but they're, they're mostly used for soccer right now. So we'll be doing more of those up here. We will be putting in right now, this is the area that's all built up, this over here. So we'll be adding a parking lot to this. We've added a restroom right in here too, um, in the meantime, so that people can use that. Um, the <laughs> They had portalettes, I think, out here before for the, the soccer folks, and it was not um, ideal. We're actually going to be putting in some new softball fields also, and then parking associated with, with the softball fields. And then up in this area here, we are looking at doing sort of court sports more, and this would be pickleball. Um, and the city of Orlando, we currently don't have any pick, pickleball courts um, that are city owned. And so we would be putting in pickleball courts and maybe some futsal type courts. And futsal is um, a soccer game that you play with, um, with your feet in a ball, but I think they only have three to five people per side. It it's, can actually be done on a tennis court size field. Okay, this is, this is a huge project for us and, and it's very, very exciting. Um, Grand Avenue is going to be, this is Grand Avenue Elementary School, and we have a park that surrounds it already. And um, Grand Avenue Elementary School was decommissioned by the, um, the schools, uh, Orange County Public Schools, and we actually got this from them. And we're, it's a historic building. Um, it's the same design, same um, architect as Princeton Elementary. They're both considered historic buildings. And the thought was initially that um, this would be uh, torn down and turned over to the city. And we said, no, we wanted to save the building. And so we did a bunch of lobbying and we, we actually you know, got them to agree. So we've got the building and this is a, a blow up of what it looked like about a year ago. This is the historic building, it's beautiful. This is an old building that is good, it's not historic or anything and it's gonna be removed. And you can get an idea, this is the park around it. Um, we are also renovating the park at the same time. We're putting in new playground pieces. We're putting in um, some musical um, components for people to use and it's mainly for kids, but We've got a lot of this donated. The National Recreation and Park Association was to have their meeting here this past October. And before COVID, we were on track to go ahead and get the whole park renovated by the time their meeting came about. And they were getting a lot of uh, companies to donate things to us for to be able to renovate the park. Um, unfortunately, they had to cancel their meeting. They did it on you know online. Um, instead so we couldn't have this be a big splash for that um, event 
but we're still getting all the donated items and renovating the park. So we're, we're really excited about that. I'm gonna show you what things are gonna look like with the building. This is the historic building right here. So you can see we're keeping all that and we are abutting it. And there's a couple of things to, to sort of think about with this. We wanted to make sure that we stayed behind the original face of the building. So we didn't detract from the historic part of it as we built the new building. We are moving um, our Paramore Kids Zone offices. And for some of you who are unaware of what Paramore Kids Zone is, excuse me, it is a program that we run that um, helps kids in Paramore. It was started off as a prototype for um, something that we could move to other neighborhoods. And we're actually in the process of moving into other neighborhoods right now with it. But for low income neighborhoods um, going in and providing all sorts of supports to help kids thrive, including uh, educational supports by having um, our, we call them student advocates that actually uh, work with the students, make, help them make sure that they get their homework and stuff done, um, work with the schools if, if somebody's having a, an issue um, that they can work with both the, the child, the parents and the school administration to help uh, remedy and they just do a lot, provide a lot of, we provide athletics programs for the kids so they have something to do. We provide um, things for the adults in the neighborhood, um, exercise classes, we have a gym, all sorts of things. So between our recreation department and our Paramore Kids Zone, um, they'll be taking over this building. The Paramore Kids Zone is mainly gonna be in here um, with some other administrative offices. This area is a brand new building that we are adding on to it, including a large gym. Um, we will be relocating our downtown recreation um, facilities down here because the Creative Village will be taking um, our old building there, which is an old armory building. And we had a large gym in that building. So we're replicating it here. There'll be a weight room. There'll, there'll be um, other administrative offices up here. This particular area, again, this makes me really, really excited. This is going to be our pottery studio, which is, they do more than pottery. They have art classes and everything there. Our current location for the pottery studio at the downtown recreation site um, is fairly small. And so they're, they're limited on how much they can offer because, you know, only one group can be in a, a room at a time and, and they have only like three rooms to, to do things with. This is going to give them more area and this area outside the walls is going to be an outside kiln area where they can, it'll be secured, but they'll be able to uh, do some of their firing outside and do some of their special classes there. They'll also be offering um, other types of art classes, uh, drawing, painting, things like this. We have very, very talented staff and they also have very, very talented uh, consultants that come in and perform these classes. We'll be adding new parking back here. And then this is going to be sort of an event space for people who want to, you know, hold, hold events at our facility. Um, and so if there's tournaments, things like this, um, the, the, you know, different uh, teams can, can meet out here. There's going to, it's going to be a nice space. Um, and again, like I said, we're, we're renovating the park and the playgrounds for redoing the playgrounds. This is another large project that we're very excited about. Our Rosemont Neighborhood Center, um, we're adding a, an entire gymnasium to this. This is Lake Orlando over here. This is uh, North Lake Orlando Parkway. And this is, if you, if you took that around the lake and you came up to the Rose of Trolley Way, if you took that here, this is our facility right here. This is the center. You can see the pool right there. We also have this whole thing is the park um, around it. This is Rosemont Elementary School to give you another marker on how to find this. Here's a close up of the building. Here's the building, here's the pool. And these are the pool buildings. Um, this is where the gymnasium is going to be. We have to, we're moving these two um, basketball courts. One's going to go over here and one's going to go stay in this general area. And we're, and we're adding parking. Uh, as 
is the case at a lot of places that get a lot of use. Um, there just is not enough parking for a lot of our events. We do have, there is on-street parking too, but it's just more convenient to have it here. So we'll be having parking around here. Now this um, particular project, I know some, some people probably have questions on when we're gonna be done with some of them. And if so, you can ask it in the chat. This should be done within a year. Um, I'm thinking probably fall next year, um, maybe a little bit earlier than that. And last thing I wanna uh, tell you guys about, and tell me if I'm going wrong on the time here, I can't see the, the timer. Um, you're good. I'm good, okay. Uh, we are redoing the master plan for the entire city for our park system. That includes our parks, that includes our recreation programming, that includes any of our facilities. And we have hired um, a consultant and they have gone through and done the first um, pass at looking at our inventory and just generally getting all the information together. We're just starting the process where we will be getting more input from the public and start doing the analysis of what um, people are asking for. We've had a series of um, seven meetings already with the public in different districts. And so have a bunch of uh, input from those meetings. We also did a survey and some of you may have participated in either of these two things, but where we asked a series of questions and we had a, um, a company that specializes in that kind of information, try to make sure that we we had a very uh, representative demographic answering questions. So we can try to make sure that we make our, our parks and our plans for the future um, part of what the community wants. Now, this isn't the final step. I just wanna let you know, um, once we get done with this whole process, which will probably take about another eight months or so, um, to get the, the final product. But once we get that completed and it's adopted by city council, anytime we have a project in any of these areas, we'll use that as the basis of what in general people want, but then we'll have community meetings to actually discuss the project and make sure that we are up to date on what, what you know the community wants. So there'll be more opportunities for people to um, you know, let us know what they want in an area. And that's pretty much it for the for the um, different projects, the major projects we're working on right now. We have a number of other smaller projects um, that will be coming out of the the shoot here in the next probably six months or so. Denise, this is Trisha in communications and neighborhood relations. We did have a few questions come in through our that feature that I wonder if you could answer. Sure. Um, question number one, plans to improve accessibility to uh, people with disabilities in parks? Yes, um, we're working very hard on that. I'll tell you right now, any park that has been renovated in the last 20 years, has, it has barrier free access, uh, probably longer than that, probably almost 30 years. Um, that was, that was always one of our prime targets. Does that mean every aspect of every park is um, accessible? No, um, but the major walkways, the, the um, ways for people to get into buildings, all that in all of our parks um, are ADA accessible. Where we were lacking, and frankly, if somebody who asked that question has something in mind where maybe um, we're unaware of. I would love to hear about it because we're always trying to make improvements. But um, one of the things that has always bothered us is trying to make playground equipment for children who may have disabilities. Um, and we, we have quite a few um, parents who have contacted us over the years and helped us make improvements to some of our playgrounds. But that is something that we are working hard on. Um, the new one at Lake Lorna Dune is going to be completely accessible. Um, part of the drawbacks of the previous times when we did renovations where we were unable to make, we, we always made sure we had at least 50% of the equipment accessible, but the, the kinds of things that made it difficult for us to do it is one, either the products weren't available um, for uh, at a commercial grade that we could use for our public 
playgrounds. So, so we couldn't, we didn't have any way to install them or they were so space prohibitive where they, we only had a certain amount of space and um, all the old ramping was very, very long. And um, you want to, you want to have equipment that the kids um, are excited about using. So you can't just have really low stuff all over the place. You, you need to have some things, kids like to climb, even, even kids that are um, using, you know, um, mobility aids like to be up. And so trying to get um, kids up is one of the, the um, challenges because ramps and things like that take a lot of room, but there, there's so many better products out. Uh, we had a hard time trying to get swings for kids that, that maybe um, had mobility disabilities, but now they have parent child swings. They have a number of things that we're using in our parks. So um, that was one of our major problems before, but that, that's improving. And then um, we're, we're in Florida. So grade changes aren't horrible for, for most of our parks. There are a few places where it is difficult um, because of slopes to, to be able to get to if you have mobility issues. We are just now also designing our playgrounds and things like that for people who have um, cognitive disabilities, and, and other types of disabilities, um, autism, things like this, things that would engage them with sound and with color and, and things like that. So hopefully that answers the question. The, the next question that came in is, are there any parks with Wi-Fi and where, they, where the main activity is uh, just walking trails? We, I don't think we have any parks right now that have Wi-Fi around walking trails. Um, our centers all have Wi-Fi and I know people can get Wi-Fi too if they are in like the parking lot. So all of our recreation centers have, um, have Wi-Fi. We are looking at that mainly for the downtown core right now. It's very expensive to put this stuff in. And so um, we actually have some of our other departments that are helping us with some of these things, helping um, figure out where we should do it. And eventually I think we will have most of our, our parks with Wi-Fi. just at this time, we're just starting in the, the downtown core. Okay, um, the next question has already been answered but I will ask the question and share the answer. Okay. How can I share this recording? Uh, we're recording this Lunch and Learn and how can I share this recording with friends? Uh, Jamila answered that question in chats and she says she's gonna share that in an email. Awesome. So the next question is, um, do we have opening dates for Lorna Dune Park and the park in the packing district? Uh, no, we don't have exact dates yet. And I'll, I'll tell you, COVID did more than just throw people off course, um, you know, in their daily lives. It's, it's impacted all the construction um, groups too. And some of them were sort of <laughs> things that caught us by surprise. So the deadlines that we originally had on all these have gotten shifted back. Um, part of, part of the Thing is we, we couldn't have like big grand openings right now anyhow but um we will we will you know have openings when when they come up but what has stopped us a little bit is a lot of the manufacturing um companies have had problems getting materials out because um their their people you know have gotten sick or they've had to take people out of the equation more, you know, have like a third of the shift show up. And so everything slowed down a lot. It was good from our standpoint that they allowed construction activities to be considered um, ones that can continue through COVID during the initial, but we, we were, and initially it didn't seem like it was gonna be much of a problem, but then all of a sudden um, with so many people becoming ill and so many companies changing their practices, they are also having a hard time finding materials in some cases because their material suppliers are having the same issues. So we've, we've seen a decided slowdown in being able to get materials and equipment. Um, and even some of our own crews, ha not, not city, but I mean, construction company crews um, have shut down for a week here or there because they had 
key people that were out um, having to be quarantined. It's, it's, been, it's been a very unusual year. Okay. As as we can have, we, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I was just gonna say, as soon as we get dates, um, our communications group is terrific about getting those pushed out so people know about them. So um, as soon as we know something uh, for sure, I, we will get the information out. Uh, the next question is, would the city consider doing an adopt a park program? Yeah, actually, <laughs> I'm going to age myself here. I've been with the city for like 32 years now, and we tried that in the 80s and 90s, and um, it worked for a couple of years, and then the groups fell off, and it didn't really work, and then trying to, there are some parks that have, have groups that are very um, strong, that are, their work as, you know, friends of that park, but for the most part, we haven't had a lot of luck or interest in that. If you have an interest, let us know. Um, next question is, can people or organizations or neighborhoods donate benches to parks? We do have um, a program right now where you can donate benches, um, trees, things like that. As far as, as far as, what that means is it means that typically they donate the funds and we order those things and put them in. Um, other, because we, ha we have certain standards that we have to meet uh, since it's a open to the public, you know, these are open to the public facilities. We have to be careful. Plus we wanna make sure that we match what's already out there so that we don't end up with a hodgepodge. But um, yes, we do have programs for that already. And can you, can can you consider uh, providing access to water, boathouses, and docks? Well, that's exactly what we are doing at Lake Fairview. Um, we have, I'm trying to think of, we have Lake Underhill that has um, a boat dock and a boat ramp that is, you know, part of the park. We have, I think we only have four or five parks in the entire city that allow um, boat access. And so we don't have a whole lot of these. Um, Lake Fairview Park is one of them that we are doing our utmost to make sure that we have um, it very, very comfortable for boaters too. In fact, that boardwalk that I just showed you along the edge, that's being paid for in part with a grant from um, Orange County. The It's a land and water type grant made just for, it's paid for by uh, boat um, registration fees, and they have given us funding for it to help build that. And one of our attendees mentioned in the, in the chat portion that there's um, also Clear Lake as well. Yes, Clear Lake is one, yes. <clears throat> so um, I, I believe all of the questions have been asked. Denise, can we share your, um, your email has been shared. Yeah. And, that. Okay. So if anybody has any additional questions, um, you can feel free to email one of us here in the neighborhood relations team or Denise um, directly. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, Denise. That was such a good presentation. And actually, three more questions. One question, if you can answer really quickly, Denise, I just want to know for my, I'm sure a lot of people may want to know, but Jennifer asked in the chat, I think she forgot to read it. Is there a cost associated with using the tennis courts and practice areas at the new tennis center? Uh, yes, there will be. As far as that goes, I regret that I don't know, but if somebody wants to, um, to email that to me, I will forward it to our tennis center people and they can they can give you the information. I'll, I'll tell you, I think it, it requires a membership or else like a daily rental fee, but um, our fees are so low compared to anybody else around us and that's on purpose. Um, as a city facility, we wanna be accessible to everybody. And so, you know, we, we always, go through and we look at what everybody else is charging in the area and we stay below that or we need it if it's like a county or something like that um we we want to make sure that we keep everything 
friendly for for uh, cost wise. Perfect, perfect. And then, um, um, David, I believe someone just added that info to the chat. Denise, yeah, David just added it to the chat for us. If you guys are interested in that information, um, well, we have four minutes left, so I'm just going to make some quick announcements, really quick. Denise, thank you again. That was a great presentation. And um, I'll get with you later to get that presentation so we can send it out. So many people have been saying great presentation in the chat. So oh, well, good. I'm, I'm so happy everybody enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. And I just want to say to our um, attendees, we do these lunch and learns every single month. So look out for an email from us about our next one. We already have it. Uh, in the in the works um, it's going to be a kob keep orlando beautiful lunch and learn and so i'm really excited about that one as well and also our summit our annual summit um, is uh, the registration is now open and so if you you know everyone who usually attends the summit look out for an email from us about um, about attending the summit this year it is going to be virtual um, so it's really exciting. It's only it's early birds is ten dollars to register, which is really great. It's Orlando.gov forward slash summit. Cindy just put that in the chat for us. And um, yeah, that's all the information I have. Anyone else? You got three minutes. Cindy, Susan, Rebecca. No. Well, this was wonderful. Thank you all for your participation. Um, and again, like Jamila mentioned, look forward to the next uh, lunch and learn email and a uh, Facebook event coming up soon for uh, Keep Orlando Beautiful. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you enjoyed it. Good job. Very good, good job. job. Thank you, everyone. Bye, okay. enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, Good and to see you all. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs>